So, well, this is just simple experts. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about. So the, the original title was discovering, but actually it's more like rediscovering. It's, I'm not discovering anything new. Um, I wanted I wanted to um, get to a point where I was I was going to ask. Um, okay. You know, uh, certain structures would they were they would they be part of the patterns or design patterns or anything or something like that? But um, uh, we would just make this presentation too big, so I'm, I'm not going to get to that point. And uh, so what I'm going to talk about is uh, just a quick review of what design patterns are. Then I picked some FP fundamentals that will just drive how we. You know how how the rediscovery of things uh, will happen, and then I will just go on the process of rediscovering these patterns. <coughs> um, so the patterns that I discover are, are pretty well known. It's, there's nothing new here. It's uh, it's just uh, I think uh, more to understand. Um, you know how this this part well not exactly how this pattern happened, but you know how useful they are and how it, can you arrive at them. Um, <coughs> From, from code. So yeah, so I think this is the definition that uh, uh, I'm not sure where it, where it was first uh, uh, defined, but uh, this is uh, this is I think the most common and the great definition of design pattern test. You know, it's a reusable solution. It's a problem, and there's a context, and we just basically apply the, the solution to the, the problem again. So when we think of design patterns, uh, most of us, that's what we think about. You know, the original goal, there's uh, uh, enterprise and, and patterns of, uh, of enterprise application architectures, and also, you know, like all the those books, um, that's what we think about when we think about patterns, design patterns. <coughs> so why, why are they important? I think it's uh, mostly about communication. So, you know, when you talk about a piece of code, it'll say, ah, I, I've used this design pattern, and the other person knows exactly what you what you meant uh, and what you did. Um, it's also about precision, so you don't have to, um, when you implemented it, there's of, of course variations, but you know exactly what you want to do. It's like a recipe, you find this. So um, it's easy just to follow it. And, uh, and for people also to um, identify them, these patterns. Um, there's also preventing real reinvention. So, uh, you know, instead of you know continuously reinventing the wheel, we'll just learn how to identify these patterns in the code um, and say, ah, okay, here's the strategy, or I would need a, an observer here, or something like that, and they know exactly what they need. Uh, in terms of FP fundamentals, I've chosen these three. So types, well, because it's Scala, we, yeah, it's types <laughs> that are important. Uh, composition, um, so how we mix, mix and match the pieces of things and referential transparency. Um, so types, you know, what, what's important for me in types is, is that they are defined as a set of values. For example, they can be simple, like a, a int, which is just a bunch of numbers. Uh, and then there's strings, which, you know, like different, uh, and, and, and they can be algebra, algebraic, uh, or like some, or product types, they can be generic, first order, or higher kind of. And you know, like structural and all these things. There's a lot of types in Scala. Um, in terms of composition, what matters is you know is, is modularizing things in a way that you can just uh, like like Lego uh, put together something by just combining different pieces. Uh, and they all fit together, which is the, the most important part. It's not uh, you, you you don't have to cut half a piece and all these things to compose things. Um, and refresh and transparency, which means that uh, whatever I put inside, um, wh whenever I, s I choose a set of inputs, I will always get the same output. Uh, so there's no weird stuff going on that will change the, the way the, the, the function works. Uh, so this one, this is probably one of the uh, most famous slides, uh, which was like a tongue-in-cheek kind of... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, presentation from from a guy's I don't know in 2014 or something, um, and of course he he, 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 was, he did it just for fun. But uh, uh, yeah, mo most of the patterns they can be done by functions. Uh, it's true, but it's not very useful. 
so I'm going to try and uh, define some patterns from code. I'll change to the other presentation, which is, which is where the code can be shown, because the other, when I passed, the, when I pasted the code to the other slides, they, it just lost all the, um, yeah, all, all the syntax highlighting and all this stuff and the same structure. Huh? Huh? Yeah. So let's start with something simple. So this is a loop, and um, yeah, we can see you know like uh, if you want to some the int or product, there's this repetition of code here. So there's things that are different, the zero and the one, but and and uh, the way that you put the result together, but everything else is is the same. So let's try and take that thing out. So when we take that thing out, we basically just say, okay, the zero, this thing here, and is going to be a parameter, and also that function will just pass the parameter, and we just put everything in the in the same. We leave everything the same way. So we we just basically uh, refactor that a little bit, um, and now we can we can just call. Uh, the sum, it's instead of using uh, you know the, the repetition, we we can just basically um, use that like that. Um, the thing is, uh, we so we're we're now limited to ints, and maybe we should you know maybe we want to do something you know with strings or something like that. So and it's called so let's call that concat, <laughs> and concat when it has a different zero, uh, and the function actually is pretty, it looks the same, but it's not. But uh, at least um, we're going to try and, uh, and get to to, uh, to get strings to work. So of course this is this is not good. So we have to kind of um, parameterize this type. So we're going to say that's a loop of a, and uh, the list is not of int, it's of a, and the zero is starts with you know like it's just replacing with the thing. Um, now. <coughs> Ah, now you can, of course, now this works, basically. Uh, so you, you can get the, the sum uh, or the concatenation of, of a list of strings. Uh, the other thing is, is a bit annoying is that you know, every time you use this loop, you have to pass in this thing. Uh, whether it's, uh, whether it's uh, you know, strings or ints or whatever, or uh, Booleans, you have to pass in that function. So you would like to be able to just get rid of it. So it just uses it without uh, without um, you having to, to specify it. And to, that, to do that, we will just try to create something that holds those two values, called an aggregator. So basically, it takes takes a value, takes the zero, and then aggregates two two values. So let's let's call them that. that. And uh, and then we have to create a class that knows how to how to do these things for strings. <coughs> so if we if we now um, replace the uh, aggregator there, we, we see that you know like this is exactly what you get. Is there any any problems with this code so far? Everyone understands this more or less. <coughs> is there anyone that doesn't understand? Anyone's an explanation of how this works? Okay, so I'll, I'll move on. So cool, so now we have this. It's, the problem is not solved, but at least we, we put it somewhere where it can be, where we can probably solve it. How do we solve this? Uh, well, first we will, instead of you know, passing in the specific one, we'll just, we'll just put it all in one object. And uh, <coughs> the change will be, instead of, uh, instead of passing, where is it? The things here. I think I'm seeing well. Yeah. Ah, exactly. So we we need to change this here. I have to put another slide. Uh, so the loop now it looks like this. It would look like this before, and we just basically aggregate this into into the aggregator, and. Uh, and everything stays the same. So we call the zero here, and uh, instead of passing it there, we are here, and put it here, and you, you can call it like that, and this should should work fine. Uh, 
And in order to not not having to pass it, we all we have to do is is basically put an implicit implicit on it. So when he's trying now to recall this, he's going to look into the implicit scope and see if there's uh, anything that is on the aggregator because that's an aggregator that he's looking for. And it's going to look at the object and see if there's any instance of aggregator there that it could use. And there's one here, so it's going to use it. <coughs> so you don't have to. So now we were, we've, we've been able to basically call our loop. Uh, and he knows how to, uh, by having this externalized, he knows uh, how to you know, cook up strings without having to, for us to specify things. Just neat. <coughs> Uh, so the thing is, what if we don't want just strings, but we also want streams, for example? Uh, sorry, instead of lists, just uh, streams as well. Uh, now we, we have a little bit of a problem, because uh, uh, because everything is bound to lists at this point in time. So we need to, we need to make sure that uh, <coughs> we can uh, solve this problem. Yeah, so this would be the aggregators with the string and the, and the, and the ints for both cases. Uh, okay, yeah, so there you go, we've done with string. This doesn't compile at this point, so we, we need to change this. Uh, and to do that, we need to basically, uh, you know, as we have here, this aggregator did not, so it was bound to not the aggregator. The loop was was not bound. It was bound to lists. We want to, you know, parameterize this list. <laughs> and the way to do that is by you know using this higher kind of type. So we're saying it's it's something or something. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. So here um, we're saying okay, it's either int is int or strings. And then here it can be list, it can be it can be streams, and then we'll just pass an aggregator to to get that <coughs> done as before. So and now we can we can also uh, write the, uh, the implicit objects <coughs> for this uh, for strings we already have for for lists and the stream one which is you know like now it's loop of this of stream instead of. Uh, the, 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 the loop that existed without any parameterization and you know you pass a stream and everything just works as expected and we can still you know do the sum of it as we, as we did before without having to only only we only need to know this thing uh, just a question that case is the, the construction of the yeah, yeah, so this is head and tail, so and this is how you put together a string. But that, that only works for streams? Yeah. No, no, sh should it work for a list too? For lists, it's, yes. uh, it's okay. like this. Okay. So list and stream doesn't sh don't share any interface or whatever? Uh, well, they share some interface, but... Uh, not, not useful for this thread. Not, not this, this part here. What else? Okay. Yeah. So we fi we figured out the uh, the sums and the concats. They they work as as we, we said. Um, the the function that we this function we can actually now call them aggregate all. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a list or a stream. It's a string or an int. Basically, all I need is a loop, something that you know knows how to deal with strings and lists. And an aggregator, something that knows how to, you know, deal with inks and strings, and you know, like all you have to do is is loop uh, with the aggregator on it. <laughs> yeah. So what, what about if I want to, you know, like I don't want uh, strings, uh, inks in strings. It's too simple. What if I want uh, one of my types? Because that's what you know most most of us will, you know, use uh, custom types. And also, what if instead of uh, you know finishing with A here, what if I want to you know aggregate into another different type? 
So these are questions that I'll try to, to uh, respond next. So yeah, let's create a, a class called money. And so money will, will basically, all we have to do to now use what we've, what we've done before is to find a, an aggregator. That's all we need. This, we have lists and we have streams for one side. And the aggregator didn't have money. So if we define the, the aggregator for money, now we can call aggregate all. And it just knows how to aggregate all, all the monies together. It's pretty brilliant. So you don't, you know, you don't have to, all you have to do is, is create a little bit of three lines of code and you can use it with streams, with whatever we define on the other end. That's cool. Of course, this thing has aggregators and, and uh, aggregators have, have a name, which is called monite. Uh, and, uh, you know, zeros, the, 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 the zero is called an M zero because it's monoid zero, and the, the, the aggregate function is called monoid append. And yeah, this is exactly, it's the same thing that we've done before, it's just the names are all, you know, like we, we didn't use the, the names as, you know, like we would use in Catholic theory. But yeah, exactly, this is the def definition of a monoid. <coughs> so this, this is a, an example of one pattern. Uh, we can continue. We can we can look at at loop, which is a bit like fold. It's not like it's not fold because fold uh, it's it's missing the part where you can return something that is not an anchor. But it's it's a bit like fold. So you can you know like it goes through the thing and takes all the elements and all these things and each one has a different implementation. So we, we can say it's fold like and um, to fold. Uh, basically, uh, you need a, a, a monoid instance so you can put two values together, um, and you need the, you need basically uh, a point where to start if, uh, if the if the the thing that is to be foldable is is nil, uh, which in this case is for a list, uh, and if it has elements, you just you know uh, use the recursion to to append the value with the rest of the lists. <laughs> yeah, so this is not tail recursive, but you know, like, I think for the examples, I think it's good enough. And the, the thing, the, the one for our strings. <coughs> so you can, you can now fold strings and lists, basically. And you can use it with whatever you want, uh, um, which type you, you want, as long as you have a monoid for it, or you know, an aggregate. Cool. So, what else? Uh, what else can we do with this? Uh, imagine that now, what I wanted to do is we, I don't want to sum the money, but I, I just want some parts of it. So I don't I don't care about the, the decimal parts of it. I just want to sum all the, the units. Uh, so I would like to be able to do this. You know, like uh, change all of these guys into just the just this 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 bit. Uh, which is something you know is very common uh, people to, to do. Uh, and looking at the aggregate, so change all would be a, a bit, bit similar as aggregate that we've done before. So you know there's a type A, which in this case is money, and then we have list or stream or whatever, and then there's a, a bunch of them, and then there's there's going to be something looping, and then uh, there's there's going to be something here is putting together, but we don't want to put together. What we want is to transform. So it has to change here a little bit. Um, yeah, so what we want is basically this. <coughs> so we, we take a, an A and a B's because we want to transform things, to change things from A to B. And, uh, and you know, you, we, we pass something in which we call here F, but it's the same as the M, which uh, list or stream or anything. And as the, same, uh, <coughs> the same higher kind of type here. And we we're going to pass something called a game changer. Some guy that you know like knows how to change some things uh, things from one place to another. And this game changer that only has this changes method. Uh, you know, like takes a bunch of things from A. A bunch might be one, but you know, like something that uh, has A's in it or one, and then changes it to B, and then returns the, the same thing. So it's kind of like a box. 
you have one A or multiple A's or no A's at, at, at all, but, and then you apply this thing to it. So if we want to do that for lists, uh, it's pretty much the same as we had before. So we, we, we go through the list, we change the head, and then we change the rest of the tile, and we just put them all together. Um, yeah, and this, this, this game changer, so you, you, can ch you can check how it works with this, which increments all the, you know, this list, so this would work. It would uh, return two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, uh, you, you can now, you know, uh, stream ones or twos and threes or whatever you want. Uh, you have to pass in the function that you want to change, but now you can change anything, anything um, that that you want. <coughs> so of course, this this thing called this changer thing, uh, this game changer. Uh, is another pattern that we know with, which is called functor. So, um, and there's a, uh, and its uh, method is called fmap, functor map. <coughs> and uh, basically, so it's a functor of, functor is something that you can map over. So, uh, so here it's the same mapping over A's, and then when you map, you can transform A's to B's, um, and then you get the result of F and B's. <coughs> And here's one implementation that I've shown, so all the, the names are just changed for lists. So that's functors. Um, maybe a, if another pause to see if, if this is okay, or too complicated, or are people, can, can people follow what's, what's going on? Not, not a lot of heads nodding, I don't know. Should I should I go back and explain something or? <laughs> so uh, f is a higher kind of type. Yeah. So f is a, another higher kind of type. Uh, so yeah. So this is. So you think of this as, as something that uh, you know, uh, for example, takes takes a parameter to be to be defined. But, so but, but I I can't map from list A to stream B. No, because because uh, they are they are bound to the same thing, okay. and that's uh, that's by design. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. You, you can't do you can't do that. At least with functors, you can't. So okay. functors will, will just keep the same structure. They will just change the contents in in, in it. <coughs> cool. So going going back to to our loop, and now in putting things together. We can probably, instead of you know using the loop that we had, uh, we can we can have an aggregator and the game changer to avoid having you know repeating again the loop thing um, and uh, using composition uh, to to define this. Uh, so basically, well, this can be improved a little bit, but uh, the main thing is uh, first. You change all the A's, so we're getting a list of A's. So we change all the A's to a list of B's, and then we just aggregate them all together. And and now, now this this loop here looks looks more like a fold because because now you can change, you, know, you can return something different. Um, but you can still do what you did before, which is to, you know, if you want to just concatenate a, a, a list of strings. You can just pass this function, which is uh, which is the same as the identity function. So whatever you take, you, you return, and that's it. <laughs> that's all. That's all I have for now. <laughs> this is not for me.